The ground seemed to breathe under my feet. The colors were more intense, as if the world were painted with an impossible palette. The sound of the wind had a shape, and for a moment I felt like I understood something bigger than myself. But at the same time, my heart was pounding, my body trembled, and time seemed to have stopped. Was this a revelation, or simply the effect of a substance in my brain? That is how many people describe their experience with peyote. But what is really happening in the body when this occurs? How does this plant act on the nervous system? Today we will explore the science behind its effects, without myths or exaggerations. Peyote contains mescaline, a psychoactive alkaloid that acts on serotonin receptors in the brain, similar to LSD or psilocybin. By binding to these receptors, it alters the way the brain processes sensory information. This can cause visual hallucinations, changes in the perception of time, and a feeling of deep introspection. Mescaline causes an increase in connectivity between different areas of the brain. This might explain why people report feeling like they are accessing new realities or understanding concepts from a completely different perspective. However, this same effect can lead to disorienting or even distressing experiences depending on the emotional and mental state of the person consuming it. When consuming peyote, the process that unfolds in your body and mind is a progressive transformation, an immersion into a different reality shaped by the brain's chemistry. It all begins with the initial physiological effects, which can be felt between 30 and 45 minutes after ingestion. A sensation of warmth spreads through the body, while the stomach churns with a discomfort that's hard to ignore. Nausea, sweating, and a slight tremor mark the beginning of the journey. A natural reaction of the body to the presence of mescaline the alkaloid responsible for the visions and perceptual alterations that are to come. But while the body adapts, mescaline has already begun its work in the brain. It travels through the bloodstream until it reaches the prefrontal cortex, the thalamus, and the limbic system, binding to 5-HT2A serotonin receptors the same ones that interact with substances like LSD or psilocybin. This union generates unusual activation in certain areas, allowing the brain to process information in a completely different way. What was once background noise becomes a surrounding sound. The shadows stop being mere light contrasts and seem to take shape. The world acquires a strange and at the same time fascinating hue. Approximately one hour after consumption, the sense of time begins to distort. Minutes can feel like hours, and memories that seemed buried emerge with an unsettling sharpness. Emotions intensify. The beautiful becomes overwhelmingly beautiful. The sad, unbearably deep. Activity in the visual cortex increases, and suddenly moving geometric patterns appear, figures that seem to emerge from some hidden corner of the mind. Many describe this moment as the beginning of a revelation, the sensation of understanding something immense and indescribable. However, the most enigmatic effect of peyote is not visual, but existential. As the mescaline continues to expand in the brain, a structure known as the default mode network reduces its activity. This network is responsible for the perception of the self, the sense of identity, and separation between the individual and the outside world. 
When its functioning is altered, the barrier between the body and the environment begins to dissolve. It is at this point that many people experience a feeling of unity with the universe, a total connection with nature, with other living beings, or even with something they interpret as the divine. Some describe this moment as a dialogue with their subconscious, an encounter with archetypal figures, spirits, or mystical entities. For science, what happens is a state of cerebral hyperconnectivity in which brain regions that normally do not work together begin to communicate. This allows for the association of ideas in unusual ways generating symbolic interpretations that can feel like profound messages or personal revelations. Between the second and sixth hour, the effect reaches its peak. The visions intensify. The sense of reality becomes completely fluid. Some describe dreamlike landscapes, tunnels of light, or the sensation of passing through different layers of existence. Others experience moments of overwhelming introspection in which they confront fears, memories, or repressed emotions. Finally, as the hours pass and the body begins to metabolize the mescaline, perception gradually normalizes. Colors return to their usual state. The sound of the wind stops being an endless echo, and the feeling of unity dissipates. But something has changed. The mind is still in a state of deep reflection, trying to process what was experienced. In the indigenous tradition, this is the time to interpret the experience, to find meaning in the visions. In modern science, it is known as psychological integration. The brain's attempt to fit an extraordinary experience within the framework of everyday reality. For some, peyote is a tool for exploring consciousness. For others, a mere chemical distortion of the brain. The truth is that, beyond beliefs or interpretations, its effects on the nervous system are real and have been documented by neuroscience. And although their visions may feel transcendental, they are ultimately a reflection of the brain's power to shape our perception of reality. In the next chapter, we will set neuroscience aside and travel to the past to discover how ancient civilizations used peyote in their sacred rituals and how its significance has evolved over time. Long before science tried to explain the effects of peyote, this small cactus already held a sacred place in the lives of various indigenous civilizations. For some, it was a bridge to the world of the gods. For others, a teacher that revealed hidden truths. Its history is intertwined with spirituality, medicine, and the clash between cultures that, to this day, continues to define its use and meaning. The first encounters with peyote. The earliest evidence of ritual peyote use dates back at least 5,000 years. In ancient caves in northern Mexico and southern Texas, dehydrated peyote buttons have been found, along with remnants of ceremonial instruments. For the indigenous peoples, peyote was not just a plant, it was a spirit, a living presence with the ability to guide those who consumed it. The Chichimecas, the Huicholes, the Raramuris, and other tribes of the Mexican desert saw in peyote a direct connection with the sacred. They believed that its consumption allowed them to receive messages from the gods, heal diseases, and make important decisions. It was not a recreational experience, but an act of profound transcendence. In the Huichol worldview, peyote, called Jikuri, is linked to the creation story 
According to their mythology, the gods revealed the location of peyote to them after a long pilgrimage in search of food. Since then, the Huichol have continued this sacred journey every year, traveling hundreds of kilometers to the desert of Wirikuta, where they harvest peyote in an act of communion with nature. The rituals and the peyote medicine the consumption of peyote in ritual ceremonies was, and continues to be, strictly regulated by shamans or spiritual guides. Not just anyone could take it, and those who did had to be physically and spiritually prepared. In the night ceremonies, the community gathered around the fire, guided by the chants and drums of the shaman. The ingestion of peyote was accompanied by prayers and requests to the spirits in search of answers, healing or protection. From the indigenous perspective, peyote not only allowed visions, but also diagnosed diseases and healed the soul. It was believed to reveal the cause of an ailment, enabling the shaman to find the best way to treat it. Even today in indigenous communities, it is still used in therapeutic contexts for both physical and emotional problems. Peyote also had a warrior use. Some tribes used it before battles to increase endurance and concentration. Its ability to reduce the sensation of fatigue and hunger was highly valued by warriors and hunters who could cover great distances under its influence without feeling exhaustion. With the arrival of European colonizers in the 16th century, peyote went from being a sacred plant to being considered a threat. Catholic missionaries saw in its use a pagan and demonic practice. They could not conceive that a simple cactus could provoke such intense spiritual experiences without the church's intervention. For them, the visions it provoked were not divine revelations, but deceptions of the devil. The persecution was immediate. The Spanish Inquisition prohibited the consumption of peyote and severely punished those who used it. Despite this, the indigenous peoples resisted and kept their traditions secret. The rejection of peyote did not disappear with colonization. In the 19th and 20th centuries, with the expansion of Christianity and the growth of anti-drug laws, several governments attempted to eradicate its use. However, its importance within indigenous cultures led to the creation of legal exceptions for its ritual use in some regions. Today, Peyote remains a symbol of cultural and spiritual identity for many indigenous communities. In Mexico, the Huicholes continue to pilgrimage to Wirikuta in search of their sacred plant, while in the United States, the Native American church has achieved legal recognition of peyote as part of their religious ceremonies. But the plant faces new challenges. Over-exploitation and habitat loss have made peyote increasingly difficult to find. Paradoxically, while modern science investigates its potential therapeutic uses, its availability in nature is decreasing due to increasing demand and irresponsible extraction. The history of peyote is a history of resistance. It has survived religious persecution, colonialism, and legal prohibitions. But its greatest challenge is yet to come. Balancing the preservation of an ancient tradition with the advance of modern science. In recent years, various institutions have begun to investigate the therapeutic use of psychedelics in the treatment of mental disorders. And although psilocybin and MDMA have received more attention, mescaline has also shown promising results. Preliminary studies suggest that peyote could help in the treatment of treatment-resistant depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder, 
PTSD. In guided therapies, patients who have taken mescaline report a reduction in fear, greater clarity about their emotions, and a sense of reconciliation with their traumas. Researchers believe this is due to two main factors. First, the restructuring of emotional perception. Under the influence of mescaline, patients can revisit painful memories without the same level of distress, facilitating the processing of repressed emotions. Two, the neuroplastic effect. Some research suggests that psychedelics can promote the formation of new neural connections, helping the brain to break free from negative or destructive thought patterns. However, science is still in its early stages. Studies with mescaline have been less frequent than those conducted with other psychedelics partly because its legality remains an obstacle. Despite its potential therapeutic benefits, peyote remains illegal in most countries. In the United States, for example, mescaline is considered a prohibited substance, although the Native American church has achieved a legal exception for its ritual use. In Mexico, the harvest and consumption of peyote are allowed only for indigenous peoples with recognized traditional uses. The problem is that, as interest in its therapeutic properties increases, so does the demand, which poses a threat to wild peyote populations. This cactus has an extremely slow growth. It can take up to 15 years to reach maturity, and its uncontrolled extraction could push it to the brink of extinction. This has led to an ethical dilemma. Should medical research and therapeutic use of mescaline be allowed, even if it endangers a plant that is sacred to indigenous cultures? Some scientists argue that the solution could lie in the artificial synthesis of mescaline, avoiding the harvesting of wild peyote. But for many indigenous peoples, peyote is not just a chemical, but a living spirit, and its use in a non-sacred context could be considered an act of cultural appropriation. Peyote is found at an intersection between the ancestral world and modern research. But the truth is that its use and significance continue to evolve. What was once seen as a threat to society could now be an invaluable resource for mental health. The question is, will we be able to find a balance between cultural preservation, ecological conservation, and scientific advancement? Share this video so that more people can protect their health. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, Visit tuvisalud.com and meet our health coach. See you in the next video.